When I was a kid, I loved the game SimCity. In it, you get to be a virtual mayor and design your own town, placing residential, commercial, and industrial zones, roads, power lines, parks, you name it. The game can be more or less open-ended, but there is sort of a scoring and leveling system based on population. When you start out, you're in control of a village. Once you hit 2,000 people, you graduate to a town, and once you get to 10,000, you're a city. Now, cut to middle school me in social studies class when we have a unit about local governments. When asked about the differences between villages, towns, and cities, I very confidently rattled off the population counts from the game. I was not correct. But what is the correct answer? As you might expect from this channel, the answer I learned growing up in Wisconsin is not the answer everywhere. Some states don't even have towns and villages. So are there general trends that we can identify? Are there states that actually have a SimCity sort of system? Let's dig in. This video is all about terminology, so before we begin, we have to define some of those terms. I mean, on the one hand, it's obvious that Chicago is a city, Nashville is a city, Las Vegas is a city, Seattle is a Wait, rewind that. Okay, Las Vegas is definitely a city, and we can see its boundaries here. But the Las Vegas Strip, which is where most of the hotels and casinos are, is here. It's not part of any city. So let's back up and think about what we're talking about here. If we look at this image, we can see a mess of farmland, but with a small collection of stuff in the middle. These are homes, businesses, churches, etc. The U.S. Census Bureau refers to a concentration of people like this as a place. And that's a good general term because it doesn't overlap with any of the other words we're going to be using here. But looking at Florida, what makes Tioga just a place while 10 minutes up the road, Newberry is a city? The difference is that Newberry is incorporated. Again, what this means varies from state to state, but in general, being incorporated means that there is some specific local government that oversees a place. I might be making this sound overly technical, but something like a city hall with a mayor and the council and Leslie Nope in the Parks Department would be an example of this. And looking at terminology, these are often called municipalities. Now, pretty much anywhere you go will be under the control of the state government and some broader local government like a county. Plenty of people are okay with just having that, especially when it comes to the additional taxes and regulations that being in a municipality might require. This is one of the reasons the Las Vegas Strip isn't actually in Las Vegas. There was a proposal in the 1950s for the city to annex the Strip, or add it to its boundaries, but instead the area formed itself into a town, which in Nevada is still unincorporated, but it had the upshot of blocking the city from taking over. But that's not always the case. If there is a group of residents of some minimum population somewhere that get together and decide that they want more services and more local self-control, they can file a petition with their state to incorporate and create one of these governments for themselves. And this is constantly happening looking across the country. The census added nine new incorporated places to its maps in its most recent annual release. This distinction between unincorporated and incorporated is important because depending on the state, the label of city, town, village, or a few other terms can be based on whether the place is incorporated or not. For instance, in Nevada or my home state of Wisconsin, towns are unincorporated. In other states like Arizona and Colorado, towns are incorporated. So how do states classify places? Well, let's start with the exception. Alaska and Hawaii are both outliers when it comes to how they handle their local governments. And this is at least partly due to them being designed in the relatively modern era where they were aware of how urban areas had developed in the wake of the Industrial Revolution and the general trend of people moving away from rural areas that still continues today. Now, Alaska is a bit weirder with their counties, or as they call them, boroughs, and I cover them in my previous video on the topic. Hawaii, on the other hand, is weird when it comes to its incorporated places, in that they don't have any. Their principal form of local government is just the county, and they call the head of each of their five counties mayors, which you would expect from a city but there are still identifiable communities within these counties. For instance, if you look at the address for the mayor's office in Hawaii County, it's in Hilo. But there is no independent Hilo government or even a Hilo website. It's not its own unit. Where this really gets weird is the fact that there is technically a city in Hawaii, because the government on the island of Oahu is officially called the city and county of Honolulu. It's a consolidated city county. But there's also a specific place within the county that is referred to as Honolulu, and it doesn't cover the entire county. There are other communities, like Pearl City, which is not a city, except for the fact that it's in the city of Honolulu, which is also a county. All right, with Hawaii aside, let's actually get into this. And we'll start by talking about the easiest type of place to define, the city. In the other 49 states, a city is an incorporated place, 
And if there are other types of places in the state, a city usually denotes the largest one or the one with the most independent powers. Now, that definition had a couple of caveats. The first is whether or not there are other types of places in the state. A state like Idaho used to have a more nuanced system to define its municipalities, including villages, but in the late 60s they decided to simplify things and just call them all cities. There are no formal towns or villages. The other thing to note is that I said they're usually the largest type of place. There are states like Florida and New Mexico where they sort of have a system like Idaho, where state laws just refer to municipalities in general, but they're allowed to pick whether they call themselves cities, towns, or villages. For instance, Bay Lake and Lake Buena Vista are two of the smallest municipalities in Florida, having about 60 people total between them, but they're both cities. If you're wondering why they incorporated such a big area with such a small population, well, this is Walt Disney World, and in Florida, Disney kind of gets what it wants. One thing I didn't note is that states can distinguish between types of cities, and they can do so based on a few different factors. One approach is to divide up cities into classes based on population size, so that they can place different requirements and give different powers to larger cities versus smaller ones. Alabama is an extreme example here. They divide cities up into eight classes, and the top few only have one or two cities apiece. Another, more fundamental way that cities can vary within a state is based on their organization. Most states have a distinction between what are known as general law cities and charter or home rule cities. Now, this difference deserves a video of its own, but the basic idea is that charter cities operate under a charter, which is almost like a city constitution, while general law cities operate under rules given through state statutes. Charter cities often have more freedom than general law cities to make decisions for themselves, as long as they stick within their charter. In a handful of states, all cities are chartered. In others, none are. But for those where it's optional, charters tend to be for larger cities. All right, so let's move on to towns. Now, the states that have towns can be divided into two broad groups. The first group treats towns a lot like cities. As I mentioned before, some states have no difference at all between cities and towns. They're just a name. Some base the difference on the type of government that cities versus towns are allowed to have. For example, in Indiana, cities have mayors, while in towns, executive power is held by one of the town council members chosen by the rest of the council. Other cities base the difference on population. For instance, in Arkansas, a population above 500 makes it a city, and a population below 500 makes it a town. Although it's worth noting that states usually don't make changes automatic as populations change. Usually they have to file a petition with the state to have that happen. The second broad group of states that have towns use the term in a way that's different enough that the census doesn't actually consider them places, at least in the same sense as cities. This is common in the Northeast and in the middle of the country. Essentially, the entire state, except for maybe the municipalities or some small scattered areas, is divided up into towns, or as are often called in the Midwest, townships. You can kind of think of this as a parallel to how states are divided into counties. In these states, counties are divided into towns or townships. This is why the census treats them differently. These aren't places based around population centers. They're often similarly sized across a state, regardless of population density, and the borders rarely change in the way a cities might, where cities add land as the population expands outward. How this type of town and township operates can vary, though. In much of the Northeast, towns are incorporated places on a similar footing as cities, but in the Midwest, they can be unincorporated. Within a state, townships can vary in their power based on population. For instance, larger townships in Minnesota, in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area, can become urban townships, and larger ones in Michigan can become charter townships, both of which operate sort of halfway between a normal township and a city. This sort of in-between type of place is a good way to describe towns in Nevada, like where the Las Vegas Strip is, since they are unincorporated, but they aren't a statewide division like in the Midwest. Maine, which has both unincorporated townships and incorporated towns, uses the term plantation for a similar setup that is sort of in between the two. Taken as a whole, the upshot of this discussion is that the definition of a town is the least universal looking across the country. But what about villages? Again, in some states, villages are just a name that are no different than cities and towns. In New England, villages are often names for places within towns that don't have any real legal status. New York has something similar, but calls them hamlets. Oftentimes, though, villages represent the smallest incorporated places within a state with the weakest government powers. In states that have the second type of town I just mentioned and not the first, they can be the alternative to a city, but some states have all three as options for municipalities, with differences among them. What's interesting is that Will Wright, the creator of SimCity, grew up in Louisiana, 
And Louisiana distinguishes among cities, towns, and villages based on population, although the thresholds are a little bit different than in the game. It's possible he took inspiration for the leveling system in the game based on what he saw in his home state. So those are the three major terms for types of places in the United States. But are there others? SimCity has three more levels in the game beyond city, which are capital, metropolis, and megalopolis. Being a capital is obviously something additional to being a city, it means the state government is based there, and metropolises and megalopolises just refer to either especially large cities or, more often, multiple nearby cities that are connected to each other. They're not really terms that describe the same type of thing as cities and towns. One place to look is New Jersey, which just loves variety on this front. Not only does it have cities and villages, it also has towns and townships, and it also has boroughs. It actually has more boroughs than any other type of place. All five of these types are incorporated places, and at one time they signaled different forms of governments. There were reforms throughout the 20th century that changed the system, though, so essentially they're just names at this point. A few other states also have places they call boroughs. Pennsylvania uses the term the way other states use the term village, and Connecticut uses them for places that are within a larger town. But the most famous example has to be New York City, which is divided into five boroughs, each of which is coterminous with a county in the state. Beyond that, there are some additional terms used in New England. I said that some small, scattered areas are not covered by towns in a few states, and there are a handful of names that get applied to these unincorporated areas, many of which have no population. New Hampshire uses the term township for six of these. That's not that noteworthy, since a lot of other states use the term, but one of these six is Dixville, which contains Dixville Notch, which is famous because all of the registered voters there since the 1960s choose to cast their ballots at the stroke of midnight in presidential primaries and general elections. That allows them to tally their results immediately, so they make the news every four years for being the first results reported. The other four types of names for these unincorporated areas all have a person or a group's name in front of them, which is kind of an interesting look into the history of these states. One example is the Purchase. Crawford's Purchase, New Hampshire, for instance, is named that because it was purchased by Ethan Crawford back in 1834. He paid about 50 cents an acre, which is a pretty good deal. There is also the Grant. For example, Second College Grant, New Hampshire, gets its name because it was the second parcel of land granted by the state to Dartmouth College, which still owns the land over 200 years later. There are also Gores, which come from an old English word meaning corner. You can see that they're kind of pointy. And then there are locations, which is when they apparently decided to stop being creative with the names. All right, so that got into the weeds a bit, but if you're not into that sort of thing, this channel's probably not for you. Let's turn back to SimCity. How does its system of moving from village to town to city based on population compare to the real world? Well, like I said, there are actually states that use this system. But even in ones that don't, there is this general idea that cities are usually bigger than towns, and towns are usually bigger than villages. Where things get interesting is when states don't follow that system, or even have places that fall outside of that three-tier typology completely. I hope you found this video informative on that front. Thank you for watching.